It's six o'clock and we are ready to get started. I have a fun hour, maybe hour and a half plan for you today. I always plan two hours on my calendar, just in case we have any questions. Um, but I'm planning really an hour long program today on Misty Fuse. Now, many of you know me and you know that I can't stop talking about Misty Fuse because I love this product so much. So if I get long winded and it gets to be more like 730 when we're done, just know that I love sharing all types of different techniques with you and I hope you learn something new today. So I am Sue Pelland from Sue Pelland Designs. I love applique. And in order to do fusible rotary cut applique, I use Misty Fuse on my fabric. So I would love to have a show of hands out there. How many people have used Misty Fuse before? I can see all of you, even though you can't see me. Loads of you have used Misty Fuse before. So let me ask the opposite question. Who out there has not used Misty Fuse? Either give me a wave or, okay, I see you, Rebecca. I see you, Linda. Um, either give me a wave or put it in the chat. In fact, if you put it in the chat, I will be able to, um, to see that a lot easier than people waving at me. Okay, super. Whoops, let me minimize my chat there. So I absolutely have fallen in love with fusible applique. Last week, I did applique school. And if you missed applique school, oh, I'm so sorry. We had so much fun. And if you want to catch applique school the next time, be watching for it. We're going to run school again in September, right? Right when school is going to start. So my next applique school will be in September. In the meantime, I'm going to have some other fun and interesting evenings for you, starting with today's Fabulous Fusibles. So um, my purpose for Fabulous Fusibles is to introduce you to a whole series of products from Attached Incorporated. Attached Incorporated is my friend Iris Carp's business. And Iris is not really a quilter. She was a graphic artist. Um, she was uh, a, a, a fine artist. And she is a good friend of Esterita Austin. If anybody of you know Esterita Austin, give me a wave. Okay, have you heard of her before? Okay, some of you have. Esterita Austin teaches applique and she teaches art quilting. She does all kinds of fun things with art quilting. If you ever have a chance to take a class with her, she's wonderful. In fact, she does a getaway week in Italy. If anybody has a chance to do that, let me know. That sounds like so much fun. Anyway, Esterita was doing her art quilts and she was frustrated with the lack of a good fusible web out on the market. Now, I have no idea when this was. I'm going to say the early 90s, but I really don't know for sure. I'm going to have to look up that little tidbit. I had hoped to have Iris here, Iris Carp, the owner of Attached Incorporated. I had hoped to have her here tonight, but she has just moved her business from Brooklyn to White Sulphur Springs, New York. So she is out in the country. Does anybody know where White Sulphur Springs is? I didn't. Ah, you do, Bev. I didn't until I looked it up on the map. So she's moved out of her warehouse in Brooklyn, and now she's running the Misty Fuse business out of her home in White Sulphur Springs, New York. So because she's just moved her entire business, her demo station was not set up and ready to go for this evening. So I'm going to attempt to be Iris tonight, but because I'm not Iris, I can really give you a firsthand account of how beautifully these products work. And I'm going to give you the lowdown on what I love and what I don't love about it. If Iris were here, I might think, feel a little hesitant to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and give you my true opinion of everything that I'm going to demonstrate for you tonight. Okay, so because I love applique, the Misty Fuse is a very important product for me. I buy my Misty Fuse in 100 yard rolls. They're 12 inches wide, 100 yards at a time, and 
I put this on a paper towel folder that's under my big board. Um, not sure if I can give you a picture of that, but I'm going to attempt to do that. Let me just, uh, yeah, let me just move something right here. And then I should be able to give you a picture of that using my third camera. Let's see if we can do that. And might take a little jiggling around for me to get that to get a good picture for you, but we'll try. I hadn't thought of doing that earlier. Uh, okay. Okay, so you get my messy studio here. Let me just go through. So under here, I have all my storage of the projects I'm working on. And then here, you can see I've got my Misty Fuse right up under my ironing board. So here's my ironing board. And then I've got my Misty Fuse right here. And I just pull out what I need of the Misty Fuse. And when I don't need the Misty Fuse anymore, I just drop it down on the floor. And that way, the Misty Fuse is out of harm's way. It's not near the iron where it would get, um, uh, it would melt if it touched the iron, right? So let's get back to me again. So the Misty Fuse comes on a roll like this, but if you are not ready to dive right into the Misty Fuse, if you have not used it before, then we also have the Misty Fuse in two and a half yard packages. So this is perfect to get started. So the Misty Fuse in two and a half yard packages, it's $8.50, by the way. I just found this sticker on the back. And this is 20 inches wide. Not 12 like this one. This one's 20 inches wide. So it's just perfect for those fat quarters, okay? That's a really great size for fat quarters. But, excuse me, I like to work with smaller widths of Misty Fuse. I find that the 20 inch wide, and see it's just one little tiny package, two and a half yards, 20 inches wide, and look how thin and lightweight that Misty Fuse is. I can see right through it. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice about the Misty Fuse is there's no paper backing, okay? So how do we use a fusible that has no paper backing? So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you first, okay? In order to use Misty Fuse without a paper backing, you're gonna to wanna to use either parchment paper or an applique pressing sheet. Parchment paper works like the release paper that comes on other fusibles. So you can certainly use that. I prefer the applique pressing sheet. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why. So let me go down on my workstation. I'll put my camera on my workstation so that you can see me apply the Misty Fuse to some fabric. So I'm just gonna move my other products aside until I'm ready for those demonstrations. And I'm gonna demonstrate using the fabric that I got ready, where did I put it, for my class next Monday. So I need this barn board fabric. I'll show you the quilt, cute little quilt that that's gonna go into. But what I need is 14 by 12 inches of this barn board fabric. I had a bigger, uh, I had a full yard, so I just cut it in half. So now this is uh, 14 by 18. I'm gonna turn it to the back side because I wanna put my fusible on the back side of the fabric. But before I do anything, I'm going to clean this applique pressing sheet that I've put under my fabric. So the applique pressing sheet that's made by Misty Fuse is called the goddess sheet. So the goddess sheet that I'm using is called a fat goddess sheet. Now Iris at Misty Fuse has these in all different sizes. The one that I find most useful is this one, 21 inches by 27 inches. But if you want a larger one, you can go see Iris. If you want a smaller one, you can go see Iris on the Misty Fuse website. And I'll show you her website today. But we're gonna do some specials today for some special discounts on her products. And I don't think she's running any specials right now. 
So you'll probably want to get it from my website if that's something that you need to have, okay? So I'm just going to uh, iron out any wrinkles in my fabric. I don't normally do that, but there was a really big crease right here. And it might be hard to get this Misty Fuse to lay flat for the camera with that big wrinkle. But you don't need to warm up your fabric first like I just did, but feel free to do that if you wish. Now, I really only need um, 14 inches by 12 inches. I'm just going to go ahead and fuse this entire piece. It'll be easier for me to show you what I'm doing. Now, some of our ladies on the call are from my Ahead of the Curve membership. So I do want to tell our Ahead of the Curve members about a little extra special we have going on today just for you. But I'm gonna make a little game out of it, okay? Did anybody get the email today where I was talking about some clues to what your special surprise would be for tonight? I'm gonna to let you guess what your special surprise will be if you order any Misty Fuse products from me tonight with the 20% off coupon. Everybody on the call is gonna get that 20% off coupon, but our special AOC members, because you're members, you're gonna get a little extra blingy thing. So I want you to guess what that might be as we go through the evening. And I'll let you know if anybody guesses right. So what I did was I put the Misty Fuse on the back side of the fabric, and then I covered that Misty Fuse with an applique pressing sheet. So I have one applique pressing sheet on the bottom, then I have a nice big piece of fabric and another big applique pressing sheet on top. Now you're probably all screaming at me right now because I left my iron down. Now Misty Fuse loves heat. So you don't need to worry that I left my iron in one place for a good long time because nothing bad is going to happen to the Misty Fuse when you leave that heat on too long. Other fusibles will not fuse again if you leave the heat on too long. It makes the fusible sink into the fabric and it's no longer between the layers where you need it. So if you use some of the other fusibles and you overheat them, you're gonna be out of luck because your appliques are gonna fall off your quilt even before you get to stitch them. How do I know this? Because I made an entire quilt with a different fusible and I decided I was gonna be artsy and not stitch my applique down. And then every time I ironed that quilt, because it, it would go on the road with me. So as I took that out of my suitcase and ironed it to hang it up at a quilt show, the applique pieces started falling off. So for those of you that go back that far with me, that was my very first quilt before I learned about Misty Fuse. That was Eve's Garden. So I'm really pressing the fusible onto the fabric really, really well. And the best tip I heard was in my interview with Elaine Morton last week on sewing in slippers with Sue, which is our Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock Facebook Live. So I go live every Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock and you are welcome to join me, okay? I interviewed one of our AOC members, ahead of the curve members, Elaine Morton. And I don't know if Elaine's here today, I haven't seen her pop up yet. Um, but Elaine said her best tip about using Misty Fuse is to go slowly, to iron slowly, and to wait to peel this off of the applique pressing sheet. I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off the applique pressing sheet because I want you all to see what's gonna happen. As I peel this off the applique pressing sheet, it's leaving all the fusible on the fabric and none of that fusible is sticking to the sheet. If I didn't press this well enough, you would see sticky spider webs pulling away from the fabric and still attached to that sheet. I ironed it really well because I was talking so much that I kept ironing. So I ironed it really, really well. 
So you didn't see those sticky spider webs sticking to the sheet. If I just gave it a quick iron, that would have happened, okay? If that happens, all you need to do is lay that sheet back down and press it again until it comes off cleanly, just like this one. And look at that beautiful shine to the fabric. When I look at that fabric, it's all fused. There's no loose fibers that are moving around. Um, it's really shiny. That means it all got melted. If it still looked like spider webs and it wasn't shiny, I would press it again because I don't want to cut out all my applique pieces and then have the fusible fall off the back. I want to make sure it's well adhered. And Misty Fuse loves the heat, so there's no need to be stingy with your heat. Go ahead and give it a good hot press. Now, for those of you in my membership, this is session one of the technique videos, which is called fabric preparation. So I'm giving you a little preview of that session one, because it's such an important step. I want everybody to know about it, whether you take classes with me or not. Now that your fusible is on the fabric, you don't want to go and fold up that fabric and put it in your drawer, put it away, because right now it's still sticky. Those pieces are going to stick together for about the next 15 minutes. You're going to want to lay this out flat for the next 15 minutes, and you don't have to have these pieces laying all over your studio. You can put this right over the back of a chair. You can lay one piece right on top of the other. As long as they're all fusible sides up, you can put layer after layer after layer on there and let them all cool down together. And I like to just go to bed at night, come back in the morning, and they're ready to use, okay? So I tend to fuse during the day, leave them overnight, come back and do my cutting, okay? Is this a good fusible to cut designs? Let me get back to that chat. On a scan and cut, yes, it is, Catherine. Um, oh, Brenda says, what bling are you wearing? Brenda says, a kitchen scrubby is used to clean the goddess sheet. Thank you for that, I forgot to mention it. Um, you just got your prize package of Misty Fuse today, Sandra. Good, you're welcome. Um, what did I clean my pressing sheet with? Thank you, Brenda, for answering that. Uh, never used Misty Fuse and you don't know how to use it. Faye and Kathy. Rain's never used it before. Sally's not used it before. Okay, good, 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 good. So let me get back to Catherine's question. Is this a good fusible to cut a design on the scan and cut? So that's the brother scan and cut, um, Catherine. And this goes for the scan and cut. It goes for the, um, the go cutters. It goes for all cutters. But the scan and cut's the tricky one because that's the one that has the knife blade Okay, it works beautifully because Misty Fuse does not gum up that knife blade and it doesn't gum up your needle when you are stitching. Okay, so Misty Fuse is the perfect thing to use with the scan and cut. All right, good, 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 good. Okay, so now you know how to put Misty Fuse on your fabric. I'm going to demonstrate that one more time just in case you missed anything, but also because I wanna show you another product. It's just like the Misty Fuse, but it's Misty Fuse Black. So let me demonstrate to you with the Misty Fuse Black, and then we're gonna talk about when and how to use it. Misty Fuse Black is the exact same product, it just has a colorant in it, so it's black. Now, when do you use Misty Fuse Black? you don't need to, right? You do not need to use black Misty Fuse for black fabric. You don't need to use Miss black Misty Fuse for um, any particular reason. In fact, here's some black fabric and I've used the white Misty Fuse on there. So the question becomes, how do I transfer my designs onto that Misty Fuse? So Iris gave me an idea today from her demonstration, and I want to prove it out to you by having white Misty Fuse on a dark fabric, and then I'm going to put some black Misty Fuse on a dark fabric. And I'm going to do that in the exact same way I did the last one. Now, guess what? I forgot I already did that, but there's about two inches 
without Misty Fuse out here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Misty Fuse. Now I have not used this black Misty Fuse in quite a while. So I just grabbed it out of my storeroom here and realized I didn't have an actual package of black Misty Fuse. I just had some leftovers. So um, that's okay. It's just a little bit crinkly. So you can see it's folded over on this edge and it's hard to get nice and flat. Um, you're way better off using it out of the package, not something that's just been hanging around my sewing room for a long time and it's all wrinkly. But what I'm going to do, if my fusible is wrinkly, I'm gonna warm up my fabric. Okay, if my fusible gets all wrinkly because it's some leftover pieces, I'm gonna warm up my fabric. And then just because the fabric is warm, it's going to grab on to that fusible. I can press that fusible onto the warm fabric and I can press out any wrinkles. Now you can see I didn't cut carefully. That misty fuse is overlapped by about an inch there on my blue, my dark blue fabric. Well, that's okay because two layers of misty fuse is still softer than almost every other fusible out on the market today. So I don't worry about having two layers of misty fuse. Now, something about the applique pressing sheet that I will tell you about is this goddess curve in the corner. This goddess curve is cut out by the Misty Fuse Company so that you can always keep track of which side of the sheet you are using. These applique pressing sheets are the same both sides. So you're going to get lots of use out of this pressing sheet, but you don't want to get fusible on the bottom of your iron. So if you always use the same side of the sheet down towards the fusible, then you won't get fusible residue on your iron. Well, of course, never say never. Inevitably, it may happen. You might get fusible on your iron someday. And a little bit later, I'll talk to you about cleaning your iron from the Misty Fuse. But what we're doing is we're just pressing that extra two inches of fusible onto this fabric because I want to make sure I don't waste any fabric and I put Misty Fuse all the way to the edges of that fabric. So if I have a little spot that is not fused, I can cut a little patch. I'm just gonna cut a little square of Misty Fuse or rectangle of Misty Fuse. It doesn't have to be fancy. And I can patch that little bit of fabric so it doesn't get wasted. Now, if your fusible is bigger than your fabric, the excess fusible is going to stick to this sheet. So somebody asked, how do you clean this sheet? So I'm using the black Misty Fuse as my example this time, because I really wanna show you what it likes, looks like when you get fusible on your sheet. Now, when it's a white Misty Fuse, it's hard to see, but you are gonna feel it with your fingers if you rub your hand over this pressing sheet. And as you're rubbing your hand over, when you feel that rough area, you can scrape that off with your fingernail. Or I like to grab a kitchen scrubby and just scrub that sheet clean. And the cheaper the kitchen scrubby, the better. I get mine from the dollar store because they're not very rough. So it's going to save your sheet and make it last longer if you use an inexpensive kitchen scrubby like my one from the dollar store. It's pretty soft. If you use those Ocello sponges, they're too rough and they're going to scrape that coating right off of your pressing sheet. So use something soft or just use your fingernail. Okay. Now the, the sheet underneath is also catching any loose fusible. So if I put a piece of fabric down now on that loose fusible, it's going to pick up the fusible on the right side of the fabric. Now, even though this fusible is black and this fabric is black, it's gonna show up as a shiny spot. So you don't want any shiny spots on the right side of your fabric. So you're gonna clean your applique pressing sheet after every fabric that you press, all right? 
Now I told you I have two sheets because I'm spoiled. I have two sheets because I use them so often that I often take a new one out of the wrapper so that I can do a better demonstration. Over the years, the nonstick surface on these sheets wears off. So if I have a very old sheet like this one, it's probably three or four years old, it's not as nonstick as my new one. So I'll use the old one on the bottom to catch any loose misty fuse. And I'll use a brandy new one on top, or I'll use the new one on top for a couple of years until it starts to lose its nonstick properties. These are Teflon coated fiberglass sheets. The fiberglass gives it stability so they don't warp or stretch as you use it. Has anybody used a pure Teflon sheet like those white ones? Um, those will ripple and warp as you use it and you're never gonna get your fabric infusible flat when you have a ripply sheet. It's just a pain in the neck to use. And so that's why I love the one made by Misty Fuse. But if you already have a pressing sheet, you can use it on Misty Fuse as long as it's a non-stick sheet. It doesn't matter if you use the Misty Fuse sheet and Misty Fuse, or you use the Misty Fuse sheet with heat and bond, or you use heat and bond with the Misty Fuse sheet. Any combination works as long as you have a non-stick applique pressing sheet. But if you don't have one, this is the one that I recommend. It comes in a tube like this. And whenever I'm not using them, I keep them in the tube. That way they're out of harm's way. I don't want the edge getting caught with my scissors like I often do when I'm cutting my pieces of fabric or misty fuse. If this is lying on my cutting mat, I'm gonna cut it by mistake. So in order to keep it safe, we're gonna roll these up and we're gonna put them right back inside the tube. So only one comes in a tube. You can use just one and you can fold it over with smaller pieces of fabric. So if I'm gonna press this piece of fabric right here, I'm going to place it on my applique pressing sheet. This one's all cut up, but that's okay. I'm gonna cover it over with the other half of the sheet, making sure that this rounded corner is in my bottom right-hand side. That way I know I'm using the same side of the sheet every time. I can press my fabric with the fusible on it, peel that pressing sheet away, clean off my sheet, and then it's ready for the next use. If I always make sure I use it with, uh, in the same way, and I'm saying bottom right, that's just because what I chose. Whatever you choose, just stick to the same procedure and you won't end up flipping over your sheet by mistake. So I'm going to stop for a minute. I'm gonna come back to you so I can ask you if you have any questions on putting the fusible on the fabric. Um, something that I did not mention to you is that I wash my fabrics first. Fusible works best on pre-washed fabric because fusible likes to stick to the cotton fibers and if you have fabric straight from the fabric store, it's all laid down. All those fibers are smashed down with all kinds of chemicals, right? Softeners, hand modifiers to make it feel really good. And in the first wash, they're all gone. Well, if you fuse to those um, uh, chemicals, you're not really fusing fabric to fabric, you're fusing chemical to chemical. And when that washes away, so will your bond. You'll end up getting little bubbles in your applique if you haven't washed your fabric, okay? Just iron it again and it'll go away, but you wanna get rid of those chemicals ahead of time so you don't have to deal with that, okay? All right, good, good, good. Anybody have any questions about applying Misty Fuse? Sandy, go ahead. Oh, did you have a question or are you just fiddling with your machine? Oh, you're in the car <laughs> and you're muted, I can't hear you. Okay, don't be fiddling with your thing while you're driving. Okay, I think she said goodbye. 
Uh, Dottie, did you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, so you should only use the black on dark fabrics. Is is that why you showed that to us? Okay, no, no. So the, the answer is you don't need black misty fuse. So I'm not sure you heard me say that. You no, do not need black misty fuse. You can use white misty fuse on any fabric. It's not gonna show, it's between the layers. So you do not need black misty fuse. So why do I sell black misty fuse? And by the way, I didn't up until today. I just put it on the website today because I'm gonna demonstrate a project using black misty fuse for you because I thought it would be fun. Okay. Art quilters use it. We do not use it for applique, it's not necessary, but art quilters use it, okay? All right, good, good question. I'm gonna get back to that in a few minutes. I'm not gonna talk about that just yet. Um, because I want to go over the other types of Misty Fuse first. So let me share. Um, I'm going to share the Misty Fuse website with you right now so that you can see. Gosh, Iris. Oh, there's your home button. Okay. All right. These are all the different types of Misty Fuse that are out there. We have Misty Fuse in two and a half yard packages. Am I sharing? No. There we go. Can you see that now? Thumbs up, good, thank you. Misty Fuse in two and a half yard packages. We have white, we have black, and we have ultraviolet. Let me tell you why you would need ultraviolet or black. We'll do that in just a minute. So we have 10 yard packages. Again, white, that has my picture on it. The ultraviolet is the green and, no, I'm sorry, the black is the green and the ultraviolet is violet. That makes sense. These are the Misty Fuse bolts or rolls. I only carry 12 inches wide. Misty Fuse carries 20 inches wide, 36 inches wide, and gosh knows what this is. I'm not sure what these are. That's 12, that's 20. I think this is 36. I can't even imagine what that is, I don't know. Fat quarters and zips, I'm not a big fan of those two products. Fat quarters are just her regular 20 inch wide Misty Fuse cut into 18 inch pieces, but fat quarters can be anywhere from 18 by 20 to 18 by 22. So if you're using 20 inch wide Misty Fuse and your fabric is 21 or 22, you're gonna end up patching it, right? So I'm not a big fan of the fat quarters. I'm also not a big fan of the zips. The zips are just little strips of Misty Fuse and people use those for basting their quilts together. Instead of using pins between your um, quilt layers, we can use little bits of Misty Fuse. I have enough little bits of Misty Fuse from all of the applique that I do that I never buy zips. Okay, but you can. They're just leftover strips of Misty Fuse in a cute little package. Okay, so from the Misty Fuse website, these are all the products. I only carry what I use all the time. I will get back to the black and ultraviolet in just a minute, but let me go through her other products with you. Bonnie paper, that's something that I had hoped Misty Fuse Iris would demonstrate tonight. So I will attempt to do that demonstration because she was not able to be here. And I have some things printed for you on bunny paper. Then we have the goddess sheets. The only one I carry is this white labeled one. 21 inches by 27 inches. It's big enough to fuse a fat quarter and that's why it's called the fat goddess sheet. The other sizes are nice, but if I'm only gonna have one, it's gonna be the fat. So that's the one that I carry. That's the one that's my most popular size and I don't stock the other ones. If you want a different size, there's one called holy cow. Holy cow is huge, 36 by 48. That would cover your entire ironing surface, your, your ironing board on a big board, okay? It's wonderful. It's also pretty darn expensive, but if that's what you want, Misty Fuse has them, okay? Transdoodle. Transdoodle is a product where you can transfer your designs onto your fabric. And I will demonstrate Transdoodle and bunny paper. And I'm gonna talk to you now about the different types of Misty Fuse. And by the way, Yvonne Porcella was a good friend of Iris and Iris helped her write this book. And even though she's um, left us, she's left this earth now and we all miss Yvonne, Iris still has her book available for sale. So this is the Misty Fuse 
website. It's called Attached Incorporated, but it is www.mistyfuse.com because nobody ever remembers that the parent company is called Attached Incorporated. She's Misty Fuse Iris. We all know her as Misty Fuse. So let's talk about the other types of Misty Fuse. So when would you use a black Misty Fuse? I'm going to show you a couple of art quilt um, uh, applications for the Misty Fuse Black. And that's the only time I would ever use it. Then what about the ultraviolet? Well, it's a fact that all fusibles yellow with time. Over time, all fusibles will yellow. The only time you're ever going to notice that is if you're using white fabric as your applique. If I'm going to applique a snowman, over the next 10, 20, 30 years, that fusible will yellow because the UV rays from sunlight will cause all fusibles to yellow. You won't notice it on most colors of fabric, but if you have a white or a white on white, you probably will notice it. So if you're gonna be fusing white fabric, I recommend you use ultraviolet. That will not yellow with, over time with the, with the light. It's a little bit more expensive because she has to add a UV protector in there. So I would use white 99% of the time and ultraviolet only when I absolutely need to. I've never had to because I've never really applicated white onto anything. That's not true. I have and I've just ignored the fact that it may yellow someday. Okay, so ultraviolet, you don't really need it. But if you have a quilt that you want to fuse and you're using white like daisy petals, you'll probably want to use the ultraviolet, okay? The black misty fuse is used for art quilts. Let me show you a couple of those little tips. So I'm going back down to my demo station and I'm going to grab my um, Halloween quilt off the wall because I didn't prepare anything. I wanted to make an apple and I didn't make an apple for you. So I can't demonstrate with an apple, which is what I wanted to do, but I ran out of time. So if I have my little pumpkins, this is a nighttime scene, right? But if these pumpkins were in the sunlight, if I had an apple that was in an apple cart and the sunlight was shining on those apples, there may be a little shadow behind your apples, or I'm gonna say there may be a little shadow behind my pumpkins, right? So I can take my misty fuse and I'm going to grab my rotating mat if I can find it. Oh, where did I put my rotating mat? Here it is. Hold on, ladies, just a second. Okay, I'm going to grab that pumpkin. I know I made that pumpkin with a little tiny template. So I'm going to grab my Misty Fuse. I'm actually going to fold it so I can cut a little circle out of my Misty Fuse. In fact, I'm going to make an oval. I'm not going to make a circle. So I'm going to go beyond the 90 degree line on my Hearts and More tools by about a half of an inch. And I'm just going to cut out that Misty Fuse into a little oval. I didn't do a very good job cutting. That's okay. Okay. So now I have a little oval cut out of Misty Fuse. And I could put that oval behind my pumpkin. Now it's not very dark, so I might want to double that up and put that shadow coming out from behind that pumpkin. I would have to do a little trimming because I don't want the fusible to go over the pumpkin. I just want it to look like there's a little shadow behind that pumpkin, right? Let's just make that little shadow. Okay, now I'm not an artist. I'm not so sure how that shadow should be formed. Maybe it's not quite the right shape. Maybe it's not right, quite the right size, but you get the idea. You can use Misty Fuse on top of a fabric to give the effect of a shadow. And I probably would wanna have two layers because I don't think it's dark enough with just the one layer. Now, how, how would I apply that? I would put my applique pressing sheet right on top there and press this into the fabric. But I have to remember that it's there because the next time I press this, it's going to melt. So an art quilter would do this as the very last step 
before making a wall quilt or a piece that's not gonna be ironed because this will melt with the heat of an iron. So it really is just an art quilt application. You would never use this on an actual quilt or anything that's going to be ironed. So that is a minor use of the black. I don't find it very helpful because I don't make art quilts. But what I do love is a good little dragonfly or butterfly wing made out of my black misty fuse. So I'm gonna put a piece of black misty fuse down and I'm also gonna put a piece of white misty fuse down. So you can see how I'm going to make some dragonfly wings and you're gonna see a different effect from the white misty fuse than you are from the black misty fuse. So I've got a piece of black misty fuse down on my applique pressing sheet. I'm putting a piece of white misty fuse down on my applique pressing sheet. And now I'm gonna grab my art bin that is filled with Angelina fibers. Now Angelina fibers um, can be heat sensitive or not. It depends on the type of fiber that you get. Some are hot fix, that means they get set with the heat, and some are not. Isn't this one cool? It's holographic. It's really picking up the light and doing some fun, fun things. So I can use this tinsely type of stuff, and I can sprinkle my misty fuse with that tinsel. Now there are all colors of this, um, this product. This is just a loose fiber that artists will use to add a little bling to their uh, art quilts. So you can buy collections of these. You might wanna get this from Etsy. I'm considering getting some of these fibers because we might want to use some of these fibers in our fire and ice class that we're doing with Ahead of the Curve members um, in the next couple of months. We are gonna be doing a, a little art quilt called Fire and Ice, two little quilts. And we might wanna use some of these Angelina fibers. So I'm considering, getting some of these into my shop. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in, because currently I don't have any of these in the shop, but if it's something that you'd like to play with, I could certainly get some of them. And I'm looking for my fire and ice samples and I'm not sure where I put them, um, but I'm gonna show you anyway with this piece, what these are gonna look like after we cover it over with our applique pressing sheet. Remember, I've got black misty fuse and I've got white misty fuse. Okay, so we're just gonna layer those, um, those heat sensitive fibers together. We're going to give that a nice hot press and we'll see what those fibers end up looking like once we've given it a nice press to the black misty fuse and to the white misty fuse. Now, some of you remember me doing this when we did a demonstration on critters and we did a, a dragonfly demonstration. So I'm gonna do that demonstration for you again. We're gonna cut out a dragonfly from these two um, art pieces that we're making, from, from these two pieces of fabric that we're making not really fabric, but it's going to be an interesting uh, fiber medium to work with. And when would I use this? Again, if I'm doing an art quilt, I might add a little dragonfly on a pretty little art quilt. So we're going to just iron those. I probably need to let this set up for just a minute. And then we're going to peel that applique pressing sheet away. Let's see what happens. It's not quite ready yet. It's still warm. So I just flap it around in the wind a little bit just to cool it down faster. Or as Elaine Morton said, just wait 
but I can't wait when I'm doing a demonstration for you. So I'm gonna to try to peel it away now and look at those beautiful fibers that I now have to work with. Oh my goodness, this is so pretty. Look what I've got. Okay, so I've got this beautiful mass of fibers. The um, Misty Fuse just melts. So you don't see that spider web anymore. Now all you see is the beautiful iridescent fibers that are now mashed together into a web. So I wanna show you the difference between the black one and the white one. Even though I use some of the same colors, the yellow's the same, the pink is the same, it looks completely different on a black background than it does on a white background. So that's a fun use of your black misty fuse. So let's go ahead and cut these into some dragonfly wings. So I'm gonna grab my uh, cutting mat and I would like a straight, a flat cutting mat. But that one's missing. So I'm just gonna use this one because it's handy. Um, the reason why I was gonna use a flat cutting mat is because I'm gonna cut this out with my leaves galore tools. And gosh, I just put the white and the black together and they're kind of stuck together. So let me separate those. And I'm gonna grab my leaves galore tools and I'm gonna cut this out with leaves galore. So I'm gonna use a 28 millimeter rotary cutter. I'm gonna cut right here where I can get these beautiful little dragonfly wings out of this piece of fiber. So I'm gonna cut once. After I cut that serpentine shape, I'm gonna move my tool up by one full leaf shape, but I can't see it because all of this iridescent stuff does not make it easy to cut. So I'm gonna cut these one at a time instead of multiples at a time. So there's one beautiful little dragonfly or butterfly wing. Let's make another one here. Okay, and I would try to get two out of that light area and two out of that darker blue area to make a really interesting dragonfly. Okay, so there's a, a light one, another light one. Let's get one out of here, another blue one. I'll turn it this way so I can utilize it in the best way possible. Oh my gosh, it's about a million degrees in my studio today. I've got the door closed so that the dog doesn't come in. And that means my air conditioning doesn't come in because I don't have air conditioning in this room. So I am dying over here. Okay, so here it is on the white. Um, I can't put it on there because I want you to see this. Hold on, let me get a piece of fabric out here. I'll get the black out. Um, you know what, let me get it on paper instead. Okay, so this is what they look like on the white. And then let's make some out of the black so you can see the difference. So let's grab that black piece. Where did it go? I'm always losing things in my studio. Okay, so here's the black one here. So you can see the difference, especially in that blue of what it looks like on the white misty fuse and what it looks like on the black misty fuse. So how am I gonna make a dragonfly? Well, I'm gonna put two of his wings this way. I'm gonna put two wings underneath and then I will probably either do a more solid body with an actual applique fabric, or maybe I'll use a piece of this dark one for his body. Let's see if I can do that. Maybe that would be prettier. Or I could just use a piece of actual fabric because the body should be a little bit more solid than those really ethereal wings, don't you think? But that's not bad. That's not bad for his body. Now, because this is all heat, sensitive. We have misty fuse on there and we have the heat sensitive fibers. I could put an applique pressing sheet on top of this and iron this right down to my quilt. Okay. So I don't have to stitch this onto the quilt. I can iron it right down onto that quilt. 
So that's a reason why you might use the black misty fuse so that you can get different effects with your Angelina fibers. So you don't need black misty fuse, but boy, is it fun to play with. Another technique that I have seen Iris demonstrate is to take the black misty fuse and you can use your applique pressing sheet as a craft sheet because it wipes, everything wipes off of it. So if you want to paint, use your applique pressing sheet as your painting surface. Now you can take a metallic paint and rub it into the misty fuse and then iron that to a fabric. So you can get some really cool artist's effects using the misty fuse and acrylic paint or those acrylic paint sticks, those, um, uh, those what are they called? Those oil-based um, paint sticks. They work really well on the Misty Fuse and you can do all different types of beautiful iridescent colors on that Misty Fuse. Okay, so we've talked about the reasons why you would use the different Misty Fuse. That is really, truly just for fun. I never do it. I honestly never do it unless I'm making dragonfly wings or butterfly wings. I never use black misty fuse. I never use ultraviolet misty fuse. But just in case you're an art quilter and you want to play, I do now have them in my shop. Okay. So now we want to talk about how to transfer your designs onto your fused fabric. Well, as you just saw me cut, cutting out those leaves or those wings. I don't mark my applique designs. I simply cut them with my tools. So if you don't know about my tools for rotary cutting your applique shapes, that's why I have this big group right here because they follow me and all the fun things I do with rotary cut applique. But if you haven't done that before, go to my website, check out rotary cut applique. You're gonna love it. But I wanna show you if you're a traditional applique and you do things in a more traditional way where you actually have to draw your design on your fused fabric. Let me show you how to do that with the Misty Fuse. So because the Misty Fuse, oh, before I do that, any questions? Before I do that, oh, look in the chat. Look in the chat. Thank you, Dottie. Let me look in the chat. Uh, Angelina Fibers on Etsy, absolutely. You can buy them on Etsy. So many ideas. What's the name of the fiber? Angelina Fibers. Um, you like that, uh, Nina, you thought it was beautiful. Using Misty Fuse for basting quilt layers, sure. Let's talk about that. Angelina fibers are available on Etsy, yes. Mistyfuse.com, thank you. Will spray starch or spray sizing prevent fusion? Yes, it acts as a barrier between the layers of cotton and fusible. So yes, I don't use any type of spray sizing. I just spritz with water. That's how I flatten everything out. I spritz with water and I iron. So yes, yeah, spray starch and spray, spray sizing is just taking the sizing that you just washed out of your fabrics and putting it back on again, right? So I don't use those. So um, what is the bunny paper? I will demonstrate the bunny paper in just a minute. Okay, we'll do that next. Um, when I buy a kit from you, is it pre-wash? No, no. I don't have time to pre-wash all of that fabric. And because I'm no longer fusing my kits like I used to, um, I don't need to wash it and then fuse. Uh, will the shrinkage of the fabric affect the amount of fabric for the pattern? I include 5% shrinkage in all my patterns. So anytime I give you a yardage, it's assuming that fabric is gonna shrink by up to 5%. I calculate that into the yardage always, okay? So don't worry about it shrinking and not having enough, you will have enough. Okay, good. So we'll talk about the bunny paper in just a minute. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about transferring designs onto your Misty Fuse. So let's just take a few minutes there on my workstation and we're gonna talk about transferring those designs. So I have some fabric with the Misty Fuse on it. Let me go grab that. I've got the black with white Misty Fuse. I keep throwing things in my sewing room. So now I have to find them again. I keep throwing them on the floor just to get them off the table. Okay, so I've got the blue with the black Misty Fuse. I've got the black 
with whiteness diffuse. And over here somewhere, I've got a piece of white fabric with white mist diffuse on it. In fact, I have lots of things with white mist diffuse on it. Um, now, the one that I did was the, here it is. It's right here on the back of my chair where I left it to cool. Okay. So what if we need to draw on any of these fabrics, whether it's the, the dark fabric with black mist diffuse, the dark fabric with light misty fuse or the white misty fuse on any fabric. How are we going to transfer our designs? Well, there's a couple of different ways that you can transfer your design. And I'm going to give you my favorite method first. My favorite method is to take a piece of parchment paper. This is parchment paper from your grocery store. You can use Reynolds parchment paper because it is the best quality parchment paper out there. And I'm just grabbing a chair so I can sit down and do this for you. And my head won't be in the picture that way, hopefully. Okay, if I want to transfer a design and I am drawing a directional design, and I always like to use the letter S because it's directional and because I can make something with my name on it if I start with the S. So we're going to make that S on our parchment paper with a regular old number two pencil, boring old school pencil. And then we can take that S that's on the parchment paper and we can press it to the back of our fabric. Now, when you do this, you have to remember that if you're not on the parchment paper, your iron is going to melt the misty fuse. So make sure that you are only on the parchment paper with your iron. If you need a bigger space, go ahead and put your applique pressing sheet on top. But I like to be able to rub the design with the edge of my iron. So I don't like to use my applique pressing sheet because I wouldn't be able to see where that S is under the pressing sheet. Actually, I probably could because the pressing sheets are quite sheer, but I'm just careful. Now that I have ironed that S onto my fabric, I'm going to peel away the parchment paper, leaving the S in reverse on the back of my fabric. The S is now reversed, but you'll notice that I drew it the right way. So this is called working forward with Misty Fuse. You never have to reverse your design. When you put this uh, lead pencil down on your fabric, it's automatically reversing that design for you. Now you're gonna iron it and you really want a lot of lead on there. I don't think it's gonna work a second time because I've already removed all of the loose lead, but let's try it and see what happens. I've never done that before. Oh, look it, it marked a second time. Okay, so that's handy. I can do that several times or at least twice on a light color fabric. Now, what happens if I do this S and I'm gonna mark it again, I need a nice solid surface to mark on. So I'm using the back of my, um, Iris made a little pressing board for me using a piece of pine board a small pressing sheet, an applique pressing sheet, and a piece of wool batting. She put that together for me and just stapled it all together. So now I have a really nice surface to work on when I'm making flowers or dragonflies or anything using my applique pieces. But I use the back side of it, the pine board, to draw my S again. Now what's gonna happen when I put that on the black misty fuse. Let's see what happens when it goes on the black misty fuse. And your guess is as good as mine because I've never done this before, but Iris told me to try it because this is part of her demonstration. And she told me, go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens when you put the lead pencil on the black misty fuse. Let's see what happens. Whoops, my iron cord was stuck. Oh my goodness, look at that. The lead pencil shows up 
on the black misty fuse on the dark fabric. Can you see it in the camera? If you can't, oh, you can. Okay, good, good. All right. Another thing that you can do is you can take a good quality artist pencil set. This is a Prismacolor. That's a good quality artist pencil set. And you can use any color on your parchment paper to draw your design. So let's do a few different colors to test this out. I'm gonna go Are they on the-, the soft point or the hard point? Soft. Okay, Thank so you. a good quality artist uh, pencil set. What that does is it gives you a lot of color and not a lot of wax. A children's um, colored pencil set is mostly wax. An artist set is mostly pigment or color. So I'm gonna draw all these different lines, nice solid line. I've gone over it a couple of times to make it really dark. Now let's put that on our, I tell you what, I'm, I'm a scientist, right? <laughs> so I'm going to experiment and I'm gonna take half of it and put it on the light misty fuse. And I'm gonna take half of it and put it on the dark misty fuse. So we've got a light, a white misty fuse and we've got a black misty fuse. Because these are so teeny tiny, I'm gonna grab another piece of parchment or my applique pressing sheet before I press those. So I make sure I don't end up with my iron on my fused fabric. So ladies that are not regulars here with me on Tuesday mornings, this is what we do. We experiment together. We discover together. We find out how things work by testing it out together. And I have special guests that come on. Sometimes I've just arranged two new special guests to come on. Sometimes our head of the, mem of, head of the curve members come on. That's a new feature that we're doing. And um, we just play. We figure out how to make things with fusible rotary cut applique. We figure out how to do things with fusibles. We just play and learn together. So look at that. Okay, on the black misty fuse, you can see quite a few of those colors. I like the white best. That white pencil is awesome on the black misty fuse. What about on the white misty fuse? Pretty good. Almost all of the colors show on the white misty fuse. The dark blues, not as good, but the pink, the yellow, the white, they all look good. The red look great on the white misty fuse. What about on the dark misty fuse? Well, they're not as obvious, but that white pencil works beautifully on the black misty fuse. So those are some options for you for marking designs on the fused side of your fabric. Now, what if your design is already reversed? A lot of times when you get a design from a pattern designer, they think, oh, you're using fusible, you have to reverse your design. Well, they don't know about Misty Fuse, right? Because you don't have to reverse your design ever with Misty Fuse. But what if your design is already reversed in the pattern? Well, you can trace that pattern on the parchment paper. I'm sorry, I would trace that pattern on freezer paper, and then I would iron the freezer paper. Um, let me think about this. The pattern's already reversed. Okay, sorry. We're gonna iron the parchment paper to the reverse side. So the pattern's already reversed. We're gonna iron the pattern to the reverse side of the fabric. We're not transferring that design. We're actually ironing it and we're cutting out paper and fusible. But do you see why this is not my favorite method? In order to do it this way, I have to use my good scissors, my good fabric scissors, but I'm cutting through paper and fusible. I don't like that method. I so much prefer to transfer that design onto the fusible itself 
That way, all I have to do is cut through fabric and fusible with my good uh, fabric scissors. And I'm not gonna ruin those scissors over years and years and years of doing this, right? So if my, if my pattern is already reversed, I trace it onto my parchment paper, reversed, and then I stick this parchment paper onto the fabric, leave it there, and then cut out my design by leaving the paper there. Now, once your paper is there, you can easily just, um, just uh, rip it like this. So all I did was I just lift it up like this and the paper rips right off. So now I can take off that little paper piece. I don't like this method as well as putting it on the fusible because guess what happens? I frayed my edges just by pulling off the paper. I've got a little fray right there. That doesn't happen when I put my design on fabric and cut out fabric and fusible because there's no paper to remove. Faster and easier when you use the working forward method with Misty Fuse. Okay, I'm gonna come back for questions in just a minute. I wanna take one minute to talk about cleaning your iron. If you get fusible on your iron, these are two very good ways to clean your iron, but I'm gonna give you an even better way because you probably have this product right in your kitchen. You're gonna use a Mr. Clean magic eraser. You're gonna get it wet and you're gonna iron over the Mr. Clean magic eraser. And I usually put it on a terry cloth towel to, to, um, to make sure that I don't get water all over the place because I have a nice damp Mr. Clean magic eraser. Iron over it with a, your iron and all those little specks on the bottom of your iron will come off. So a Mr. Clean magic eraser is the easiest and least expensive way to clean your iron. Now these are not expensive either. And these are some chemical products that I have to clean my iron. The first is the Iron Clean Sheets from Bonash. And I love these sheets because there's a whole bunch of them in the package. I think 10. How many are in the package? I don't know. It's not telling me. Oh, 10 sheets right up there. Okay, so I take that sheet and I'm gonna lay it out. I use a piece of batting and then I'm just gonna lay out this sheet and I'm gonna rub my iron over it and that's gonna clean off my iron. I don't know how I got blue on my iron, but I did. And all that is coming off the iron like this. Now, if you really have gunked on stuff that doesn't wanna come off, use the edge of something hard like this wooden board and that will help to scrape it off the bottom of your iron. So after a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, if that doesn't take it off, I would use the chemical cleaner like this, or this is another chemical cleaner. This is the Bowen cleaner. And I actually have a video that I've just made of this. I haven't posted it yet, but I will. Um, I can't do it here because this one will smoke and you don't wanna use this in your sewing room. You wanna use this under your range hood in your kitchen or outside. It smokes, it will set off your smoke alarms. It's not pleasant to be around. I'm sure it's not good for you either. So make sure you use this one outside or under your range hood where that vacuum is gonna suck up, the fan's gonna suck up all of the smoke. So the Bowen Iron Cleaner I sell on my website, the Iron Clean Sheets I sell on the website and Mr. Clean Magic Erasers you probably have in your kitchen right now. Okay. Before I go on to body paper, do I have any questions? Okay, before I go any further too, you want to know what that coupon code is. Penny, you're on. Can you type the coupon code into the chat? I didn't know Penny was going to be on today. Oh, Emily had to leave. Okay, Emily, goodbye. Uh, Dottie, yeah, it comes out white. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, and I- You were going to talk about basting. Um using the misty fuse to batting yes. yes thank you thank you for that i appreciate that dotty that was dotty right i'm going by voice and not by sight because i'm not looking at the screen right now okay um 
Yes, we can talk about basting using the Misty Fuse. I don't have anything right here to baste, but I'm going to um, tell you about it anyway. I'm looking for some scrap fabric, but I'm not finding what I need. Um, before I do any other questions, I do not use a continental iron anymore, Penny. I can't get them anymore. The continental iron has no seam holes and I love it, but I just can't get them anymore. Um, at one time, the Vermont Country Store had them, but they no longer have them from what I know. The Aliso that the, the, the iron I'm using right now is the Aliso. Thank you, Carlene. You are true and correct. I do love my Aliso iron and I do sell it on the website. Yep. Um, okay, good, good, good. The iron needs to be very hot. Yes, yes. Um, oh, when I'm cleaning it, yes, the iron is hot when I'm cleaning it. The iron is very hot when I'm ironing the misty fuse on because I don't want it take, I don't want it to take a long time. So I want my iron really hot so it transfers the heat really quickly. Now that misty fuse pressing sheet is really thin. There's a reason for that. It's thin so you can see through it. It's thin so it cools down really quickly. And it's thin because it transfers the heat fast to the misty fuse to make the misty fuse melt. If you use the thicker white ones or the thicker old fashioned brown ones, it takes a long time to transfer the heat and those take a long time to cool down and you're gonna end up burning your fingers. So just be careful. If you have one of those, they work, but they're gonna take longer to heat up and they're gonna take longer to cool down, okay? So yes, very hot iron. All right, any other questions about fusing, cleaning your iron? I'm gonna go on to the bunny paper. Okay, good. Uh, I have, Sue, I have a, a very stupid um, question. Using the magic uh, eraser, yes. is your iron hot when you do that? Yes, I always, okay. keep, I always keep the iron hot when I'm cleaning it for this reason. The misty okay. thing melts and it's much easier to get off when it's melted. Okay. Okay. And it's Thank usually you. misty fuse on the bottom of your iron. I don't know what that blue stuff was. Maybe it was from the pencils, but um, usually it's misty fuse on the bottom of your iron. If it looks black and caked on, it's because it's been there for a long time and it's picked up lint and color from your fabrics. Okay, but it's probably started with misty fuse. Um, if you use all the precautions I told you about, you won't get misty fuse on your iron. But inevitably, it happens. So you have to know how to clean your iron when you're doing fusibles. Okay, I'll go back down to my uh, demo station. And if you have any questions, just shout them out. Don't be shy because no question is a dumb question. If you have it, probably five other people have that same question. Okay, let's talk about bunny paper. I cannot do a good demo of bunny paper. And this is the reason. Bunny paper is made to be used with an inkjet printer. And I just looked at every printer in my house and I don't have one inkjet printer. All of my printers are laser printers, okay? So having said that, I have printed out different things on the bunny paper using my regular laser printer. And we're gonna see what happens because I tested it earlier today and it worked beautifully. So. I don't know, but the instructions say specifically an inkjet printer. That's because a laser printer will burn your colors into the paper and you won't be able to use this sheet over and over and over again like it's meant to be used. It's called bunny paper because you can reproduce your designs over and over and over again. So just like a bunny, you're gonna have lots of bunnies um, in time. And you're going to have lots of these transfers by using this paper over and over again. So one way you can use this paper, if you print on the shiny side of the paper, there are 16 sheets and they are legal size in this package, eight and a half by 14. So you get 16 legal size sheets, but you can use them several times. I don't know how many times, but definitely more than once. I think up to 10 or 15 times, but I've never tested that out. I wish Iris were here. If you print on the shiny side, you're going to use this to reverse your designs. 
So let's see, this one's on the shiny, nope, that, this one I printed on the wrong side, my mistake, so I'm not using this one. This one's printed on the shiny side. So I'm gonna take this L right here and I'm gonna cut it out of my bunny paper. And I shouldn't do that because now I can't use it again, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you just one of the techniques. So I'm gonna take this um, L and I'm gonna iron that onto my fabric that has fusible on it. Oh shoot, I already did that. I ironed my EEN onto a piece of white fabric that has Misty Fuse on it. And we're discovering together today, ladies, because I've not done this before. This was gonna be Iris's job, but that's okay. We're gonna play together. Now, after I iron it onto the Misty Fuse side of the fabric, I'm gonna peel away the fabric and it's reversing my design and putting that design on the fabric. Now, obviously, I would not use a bright blue print on a white fabric, because that's gonna show through when I fuse, fuse this. But I wanted to show you how dramatic it is and how well you can see that line. Now, you can do the same thing with a black outline. I would design this in something like Canva, which is a free program online, and you can adjust the line thickness around your letters. So you could do a nice black outline and then you could cut right on the inside of that black outline so that it would never show. So this actually reversed my design when I put it down. So once I cut these out and fuse them, they will be right reading again, okay? because I put it on the back side of the fabric, it reversed it, cut it out, it goes the other way, okay? So if I am doing this on the shiny side, I don't need to reverse my happy Halloween. So that's what I did wrong. I reversed this design. I don't need to, because I'm putting it on the reverse side of the fabric, okay? Whenever you reverse your design, put it on the reverse side of your fabric, cut it out. When you flip it over, it's gonna be right reading again. So I did this incorrectly. So if I hadn't cut out this piece of my bunny paper, I would take that bunny paper and I'm actually gonna use the piece of cardboard inside so that I can clean off my bunny paper and not get it all over my ironing board cover. How am I gonna clean off my bunny paper? Well, I'm gonna grab some um, alcohol, some regular rubbing alcohol. I just got a little bit left in this bottle and I'm gonna put it on a cotton swab and I'm gonna wipe off any remaining color on my sheet. Now you can see this is not coming off easily. That's because I used a laser printer. If you did this with an ink jet printer, it's not burned into the surface and it's going to come off much more easily. This one up here is coming off a little bit more easily. But using a laser jet printer, this is going to clean off quite easily. And then you can use this sheet through your printer again. So you're going to use it and use it and use it until you can no longer clean it easily. Once you can no longer clean it easily, you still have another use of this sheet. Even though you can't print on it any longer after several tries, you're going to be able to use that shiny side and put a piece of fabric on the sheet. Carlene asked me about this the other day. And she said, if you're putting fabric on this sheet, what do you do? So what I did was I used a pinking shears. I should have used a colored fabric so you could see it. But I used pinking shears to make my fabric a little bit smaller than the sheet. That way I'm not gonna have any long strings along the edges of the fabric that could get caught in my printer. Now that this fused fabric is ironed to the sheet, and I'm just gonna iron that right down. 
then this whole sheet can go through my printer. Okay, I'll put this into the feed on my printer. Um, make sure you know which side goes up, which side it's going to print on, up or down. Every printer is different. When this goes through your printer, you can print a label on here. You could print the outline of an applique design. You could print anything you want on this paper. And um, what I do is when I print my labels on here, I then heat set it and you can go over that label with your permanent markers. Okay, so it's just giving you the text the way you want it, the spacing, the way everything needs to be done, even a picture, a flower, anything else. Then you're going to ink it in with your permanent markers. There are uh, products like Bubble Jet Set that will set your printer ink so you don't have to ink it afterwards by hand, but I'm never confident that those are going to do a good job and not wash out later. So I ink them by hand with my permanent markers after putting that label through the printer. Okay, so that's a little bit about the bunny paper. Here is another way to use the bunny paper that Iris told me about and I forgot. So let me go ahead and grab um, a piece of fabric. I'm going to take um, that bunny paper, the bunny paper, and I'm actually this time I'm going to iron that. Let's see. You're going to print on the dull side. So remember, I said I put this through the, the printer wrong and I printed on the dull side by mistake. Well, that's because the shiny side was all used up, right? I couldn't use it anymore. So now I'm going to print on the dull side and I'm going to adhere my fabric to the shiny side. Now I've got my happy Halloween on the back. I can cut that out. So let's cut out that L because it's directional. Right? By using this on the back side of the fabric, I'm not going to cut it out fancy like it is. I'm just going to pretend I'm cutting out that same font. So let's cut out that L. Okay. So here's my L on the fabric side. It's right reading again. Right? So I printed on the flat side that's not shiny. I put my fabric on the shiny side. And once you put your fabric on the shiny side, you can peel off that template that you just made. And now you have fusible on your fabric and it's the perfect shape. Okay, so those are different ways to use your bunny paper. Now, if that seems confusing because there's so many different ways to use it, that's when you go to Iris's website right here. And I'm going to share my screen again. Remember, www.mistyfuse.com. Click on the bunny paper. And she's going to tell you a little bit about the bunny paper. And she's going to give you several different examples. So do you do it the right way or the wrong way? This is printed the right way. Then it's fused to the fabric. When you peel off the fabric, it's the wrong way on the wrong side of the fabric. So when you cut it out, it's the right way again. So that will remind you how to do it. Then you can put your fused fabric onto the shiny side. Remember the shiny side is gonna be released. It's gonna release the misty fuse. Put your fabric onto the shiny side, run it through your printer to make print labels, okay? Wash off your bunny sheet. If you print on the shiny side, Wash that off with a cloth with some rubbing alcohol. It's all here right on her website, so you can use it multiple times. Does she talk about using? The paper can be wiped clean and reused many times. It doesn't say what to wipe it with, but you do use rubbing alcohol to wipe it. Okay, so the bunny paper comes uh, 16 sheets to a package. It's $24. Misty Fuse has an eight uh, sheet package. 
I don't carry that one because I figure you're gonna buy that once and wanna have it for a long time. So I only carry the bigger package on my website. So on my website, you're gonna to wanna to use the coupon code that Penny hopefully put in the chat. Is it there? Canva, yep, Canva's the program that I use. Um, Penny, 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 are you there? Did you put, yes, 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 yes. 20 fuse, 20 fuse, no space. The coupon code right here is 20 fuse. Okay, so I want you to write that down. Now, any of my AOC um, members, uh, oh, I don't even know it. You didn't even see my shoes. I wore some bling for you today. Okay, does anybody know what bling you're gonna get if you are an AOC member and you post a, a and sorry, and you place an order today with the 20% off coupon? You're gonna get this beautiful little bling light right here. Okay, this is a little heart bling for you to remind you of my hearts and more tools. And it has a retractable um, scissor fob. Or, or rotary cutter fog. Just make sure you protect yourself. This is a, um, goes in my ears at night, right? It is a, what is that Ear called? Earplugs. Earplugs. Ear Earplugs. Ear I just stick my, it doesn't have a hole in it, but I just stick, they're soft. So I just- Yeah, stick, we have purple ones. Yeah, just stick that onto your scissors so you don't poke yourself when you're wearing your bling. So for I love those that bling. ahead of the curve members, um, you're going to get one of those in your package if you decide to order tonight, okay? And um, I, I have enough for all the AOC members that are here tonight. I don't have enough for all the AOC members. I was only able, these, these were um, being closed out from Checker, so I don't have any more. I don't have the ability to get any more. But everybody that's here tonight, if you're an AOC member, I'm going to put one of these in your package if you order tonight with the 20% coupon. Now, everybody else, you get the 20% coupon. So yay, that's even better than our member coupon. And that's why so many members are here because they know that a few times a year, I do an extra special coupon. Now, I have not raised my prices since COVID began. That may have to change, right? So I don't do ridiculous coupons like some of our competitors do with 50% off coupons at Joann's, things like that. Look at their base prices, right? They make that up because they raise their prices so that it covers the coupon. I try not to do that. I wanna keep my prices as low as possible for you. So a 20% coupon is pretty much the best you're gonna get here at Seafell and Designs. And I do that several times a year. Um, I'll do that on um, Black Friday week. I'll do a coupon for you then. Sometimes it's a little bit more, um, more or less than the 20%. And uh, when I do a special event like this. So whenever I'm announcing a special event, please come because you may get a special coupon code. You may get a special bonus. You might get a little bit of bling. You never know what you're going to get when you come to one of these events. Um, and I hope that you have learned something new tonight about using your Misty Fuse. I'm going to stick around and answer a few more questions. But boy, did I go over time. It is 730. Um, I had planned to only do an hour. I did an hour and a half because you know me. I love to chat and I love to share all of my ideas with you. Go ahead, Dottie. Another using base, uh, using Misty Fuse to base your quilt oh, with the yeah, batting. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, um, I tell you what, talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna go get my fabric that I was gonna do for this demo because I wasn't planning on doing this demo today. So I don't have my fabric out. I'm gonna go into the other. Whoops, I'm gonna go into the other room and grab it if I don't trip over my ironing station cord. Sue, do you have, Sue, do you have a giveaway? Oh, yeah. Um, let me think about that. Uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really think of a giveaway because I was doing the giveaway for the members, but I tell you what, I will. And this is why. Um, well, I'll show you over on the demo station since the camera's already there. I went to the warehouse this week to ship because Joanne's on vacation and I found she had set aside this wonderful package because it had broken 
And so I'm gonna give away this poor little broken Wonderfill package. It's only the packaging that's damaged. The 10 threads inside oh. are perfect. And that's my artist palette that I put together for a rainbow of colors. And mm. one lucky winner is gonna get this Wonderfill thread set with free shipping out to you today. Well, it won't go today, it'll go tomorrow or the next day, okay? So Penny, go ahead and call somebody while I'm getting my fabric ready. I believe I the Jane Wilson. Jane Wilson, woohoo! <laughs> Jane Wilson. All well, right, received. that's awesome. Jane Yay! Wilson. Thank you. Are. Okay, I'm going to just spotlight you for one second, Jane. Okay. Hey, how are you today? I'm good. How is everybody else? Good, good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming. I love giving prizes. That's one of the fun things I enjoy doing while I am doing my presentations. So congratulations, Jane. I'm glad you got Well, that. thank you. Okay. I almost never win anything, so it's quite a surprise. Woohoo! Jane if, Jane, if you could please send me your uh, mailing address in either the chat or in an email. Sure. So we can get that out to you, okay? I'd be happy to do that, Penny. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. So now I have my fabric that I was going to do on a demo a few days ago and never got around to doing that demo, so I'm going to do it here for you tonight. But I need my scraps of Misty Fuse, which were also in the other room. So whenever I have scraps of Misty Fuse, right, I just put them aside. And then I'm going to take my um, cutting mat and I'm going to cut those into some strips. And you can cut them in strips or you can cut them in um, squares. But the strips are a lot easier to work with. And that's why Misty Fuse does the zips. It's just strips cut like this, random sizes. They're not all one size. They're just random size strips. So what I'm going to do is I was talking the other day about practicing machine quilting. Was anybody on that Facebook Live this week? We talked about making placement for the Senior Center. That's what my guild does in order to um, support our community. We make place mats at Thanksgiving for Meals on Wheels. And a little trick that we do is we normally do one side for Thanksgiving and we do the other side for Christmas. That way the people that receive them get double duty out of their place mats that we make. So a half yard of fabric is just about perfect. Um, I think about 16 inches by 20 inches is a great size for a placemat. So I'm using a half yard of fabric cut in half. And that, so my half yard of fabric is going to make two placemats, but I need two different prints. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm using these prints is because I want to practice my machine quilting. So I'm going to just cut my fabric the same size as a scrap of batting that I had. Now, whenever I make a, a quilt or I send it to my machine quilter and they say, do you want the leftover batting? I say, yep, send it back to me because I'm going to make placemats if there's at least uh, 16 inches left over. Okay, so I'm going to iron my fabric. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to iron the back fabric. All right, now I have it placed just right, but now I want to fuse it. So I'm going to peel back one layer and I'm going to take that uh, fusible web, the leftover strips of fusible web. So say I'm fusing a 10 inch wide piece of fabric. I'm going to have two inches left over when I'm fusing with 12 inch wide Misty Fuse. I don't throw that away. I keep all those little bits and pieces so that I can lay it down on my batting. I should have used black Misty Fuse so you could see what I'm doing a little bit better. Let me grab some black Misty Fuse. Okay, so I'm just taking the strip of Misty Fuse and I'm holding it and ripping it. Holding it and ripping it. 
holding it and ripping it to make just little bits and pieces all over the batting. The same distance away as you would pin, you're gonna put bits of Misty Fuse. Then you're gonna lay your fabric down and you're gonna press, always press from the center out to get any fullness out to the edges. And then you're gonna peel back the other half and do the same thing again. So this works on, um, I gave some ideas on Tuesday, dog beds. Our guild does dog beds for shelters, for dog sh and cat shelters. That way the animals have something that smells like them when they go to a new home. They're gonna lay on that dog bed inside their kennel crate. And then when they get adopted, it's gonna go with them so that they can be comforted in their new home with something that's not totally brand new. They have something of their own to take with them. So our guild does kennel quilts. Now, is that a silly charity? Well, not for dog lovers and cat lovers, but for me, it was kind of a silly charity. I would rather make quilts for babies or newbies, uh, uh, newborns or preemies or whatever. But if I'm gonna make a quilt for a, a child or an adult, I'm gonna do a beautiful job on it. So it's not something where I'm gonna practice my skills. I wanna have skills before I make something for a human. But for a dog or a cat, all day long, I can practice my machine quilting skills because that kitty or that dog is not gonna care what your machine quilting looks like. Somebody receiving a placemat at the holidays is gonna look at the pattern on the fabric and is gonna say, how gorgeous is that? They're not gonna look at your machine quilting. So do this with placemats, do this with dog beds. Um, as your skills improve, you can do this up to a child size or a lap size quilt. I don't um, Misty Fuse based anything bigger than a crib quilt because it's awkward on your ironing board. But now that I've just pressed both sides with the Misty Fuse, that is all locked together. And I can machine quilt this with no pins to get in the way. So that's how you Misty Fuse based. And I use this fabric in particular because I can practice my straight lines and I'm not even gonna use my walking foot. I'm gonna practice straight lines with my free motion foot on in order to get confident making straight lines. Or I can quilt from this side and I can follow the lines around the tractors, around the flowers, around the pumpkins, so I can learn how to use my free motion foot to outline quilt all of these design elements. Then we have some negative space back here and you can practice your filler designs in the background. So whenever you wanna practice machine quilting, use your leftover uh, Misty Fuse strips or scraps, and you're gonna be able to machine quilt a lot easier. Nothing's gonna move and you don't have to work around pins. So Dottie, I hope that was helpful to you and to everybody else that was here. So thank you for asking and reminding me because I get carried away and I forget sometimes when I say, oh, I'll do that later, okay? So thanks for asking again. Any other questions out there? Okay, anybody else? I have taken enough of your time tonight. Now tomorrow or the next day, hopefully, you will get um, an un- cut version in an email of this um, presentation because we had over 215 people signed up for today's presentation. And today on the call, we have 45. So people miss it for various reasons. I will put it together and throw it in an email for you tomorrow if you want to re remember anything that you saw, okay? So the code is 20 fuse. Go ahead, Terry. Um, do, are you doing anything with hand applique with the bunny paper or? Um... No. Okay. No. Um, these are all fusible applique applications. 
We did, so, we did some stitching on the machine. Yeah. Yeah. We did some hand applique during applique school and we'll do that again in September. Um, applique school, I cover uh, fusible applique, glue applique and hand applique. I don't see applications for bunny paper on hand applique because a lot of it is dependent on the fusible being on the fabric in order to transfer those designs. Okay, that's why I don't do hand applique. Fusible is way easier. <laughs> okay, I used to do hand applique, but it is, it's labor intensive because there's a lot of tracing, a lot of cutting by hand. Um, so I did give you some suggestions for making it easier using my tools, but not with the bunny paper. It's just not, it doesn't apply. It's made by Misty Fuse for a reason. It's made for fusible applique. Anybody else? Okay, I am so pleased that you are all here with me tonight. I'm not here to promote my membership. I'm not here to promote my courses. I'm just here to promote the Misty Fuse, which is not my product, but it's something that I feel very, very strongly about. I want to keep her in business for as long as I'm in business because I love her product and I never want to be without it. I will tell you that uh, she told me today about some changes coming to the 12 inch bolts of Misty Fuse. Um, there will be a, a different size core in there instead of the big core that we have now, there's gonna be a little one. It's a matter of cutting. The big core heats up the cutting blades too much and causes problems. So she's gonna be changing the core inside. If that matters to you, I have about a dozen of the big core ones left. The next shipment that I get will be the small core. Okay, the other change that's going to happen is the price is going to change. Okay, so what I have on my website now, once those are gone, the price is going to have to increase because my next shipment, I'm going to be paying more for my Misty Fuse. Okay, so this is the right time to get it if you want it. All of the Misty Fuse products, not only are you getting the 20% discount, but you'll also get today's current pricing. As I said, I have not increased my prices since COVID began. But with shipping the way it is and with uh, raw materials the way they are, everything is going up and I'm going to have to reflect that in my prices going forward. So that's why I wanted to do uh, fabulous fusibles today before the prices go up, give you that extra discount, clear out my old inventory so I know I can get those smaller core rolls the next time and um, benefits you, benefits me to turn over that product. So use that code. 20 fuse with no space in between the number 20 t two zero fuse um, you don't need any capitals in there and you don't need any spaces um, that coupon code is good through monday my shipping department is on vacation until monday if you have placed an order over the past week and a half darlene i sent uh, penny sent out your package today okay anybody that ordered over the past week your orders went out today but my shipping department is on vacation until uh, they come back on Monday. So all of your orders, even if you order today, it will not go out until Monday at the earliest. And depending on how- Thank you, Sue. As it could be two days. But yeah, Darlene, I know you needed the fabric for Monday's class. So I just went in and did all the orders that were in, uh, including yours. Okay. Uh, Dottie, go ahead. Sue, so when, when is the um, Halloween class starting? Uh, Penny, could you help me with that? I can go look. I, I know it's July, but I don't. I can't remember the date. It's, Monday. it's July 11th at 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's Monday, 11 o'clock. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Monday. 11 to 3. Monday's bats and pumpkins. Yep. Happy I asked. Yes, I'm glad you did too. So look for your supply list. Go ahead and get your supplies ready. Get your fusing done on the. Did you send one out? That need fusing. Oh yeah, that all went out as soon as you registered. So. Look for emails from me and you'll see the supply list and the student supplement for you to print. Maybe. Okay. On Bats and Pumpkins, those of you ladies who are in Bats and Pumpkins in our Ahead of the Curve membership, do not fuse your yellow moon fabric. I was not very specific. I told you exactly what to fuse, but I didn't tell you what not to fuse. So I just want to um, reiterate that your background fabric, okay? So in my case, that's the trees and your moon fabric, the yellow, 
are not fused. Your black fabric for the bats, your fence fabric and your pumpkin fabrics, those are all fused. Did you notice I forgot to fuse my um, green stem so it's fluffy, I forgot to fuse it, but we'll figure that out. I'll just use a little bit of glue oh, and tack the moon is not The moon is not fused? The moon, moon is fabric. not fused. Oh good, I didn't do it yet. Good, good. And it says on the instructions what to fuse. And it says, do not fuse the background, but I forgot to have Janie say, do not fuse the moon. Okay. So I hope that's not confusing for you. So do not fuse the moon, do not fuse the background. For those of you coming to the class on Monday, I am looking forward to it. That's gonna be super fun. That is a level two workshop. For those new members, you're not gonna be ready for that workshop, okay? That is a more complicated workshop. I want you to have some cutting experience before you do something like that. Your level one workshop this month is um, the Magic Carpet Table Runner. That's a great level one project. I totally enjoyed it. In fact, I think I took it twice. Good, good. It's a fun project. Easy, easy, easy peasy. Fun, easy, quick gift. You can make those for Christmas. Okay. Ah, uh, no worries, Dottie. Remember, Dottie, that if you can't be there on Monday, you'll get the recording in your email. You can watch it anytime. Just save your emails. Don't forget to save those emails with the videos in them. Margaret, did you have a question? Yeah, we have a uh, temperature quilt Monday, don't we, on the yes, 11th? Do. Okay. I'm doing double duty. Temperature I'm caught up. <laughs> temperature quilt is in the evening after our class during the day. I'm going to be exhausted. Yes. You will be too. I'm sorry. I did two things at once. I'll tell you why we're doing two things on one day, I am clearing my schedule for the next two and a half weeks to spend with my mom. She's coming uh -oh. for a two and a half week visit. So I'm I'm layering everything onto- yeah, I can't make the 2022 block of day temperature quilt thing. My guild is having a meeting and they're having a tag sale. So no, I'll be looking at material. Oh, good, have fun. Hey, no worries. You know what? It's always recorded. I will always- send you a recording. If you are in one of my classes, even if it's a free class like tonight, it's in there. Hey, Penny, look at those beautiful purple ahead of the curve. Oh. Events. Fantastic, Penny, thank you. It was only this afternoon that I asked Penny to change our ahead of the curve events into something more prominent. Thank you so much for that suggestion, Carlene. There it is. Awesome job, Penny. Thank you. So our get ahead uh, sit and sew is all day on the 22nd. Magic Carpet Table mm -hmm. Runner is the 20th. Bats and Pumpkins is on the 11th at 11. And then Temperature Quilt is at 6 o'clock. Now that's all Eastern time. So if you're in a different time zone, make sure you use that time zone calculator to come uh, when I'm having the class and not three hours afterwards. Um, fantastic. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, if you're curious about this membership that we keep talking about, I'm sorry I talk so much about it, but about half of you here are members. So it's easy to talk about it when a lot of you are members. If you're curious about the membership and you don't know anything about it, you can go up to the main menu bar, learn, Rotary Cut Applique. Under there is a head of the curve membership. If you want to learn more about that, it's all here for you on the membership page. Everything about membership is here. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me. Um, if you want to join, we are open all the time, but we do open at certain times of the year with bonuses. Um, did we take the bonuses off? Oh, I hope Donna did that. Yeah, she did. Okay, because bonuses for ahead of the curve were last week. If you missed applique school, you missed the bonuses, um, but you can join at any time. It, the bonus is just being there with all of us. It's so much fun. We love being together. We love uh, sewing together and having fun together. 
So come join us if you'd like to join ahead of the curve and you can have fun with us. All right, everybody, this was so much fun. So nice to see you. Rebecca, you're at work again. Oh my goodness, you're always at work when I have my events. Hopefully that means you can come during the day when I have daytime events, if you're working in the evenings. All right, everybody, it's been such a pleasure to be here with you today. You take care. Okay, and AOC members, I'll be instructing Joanne to put your bling in your box. All right. Yay! If you order before, uh, by Monday, you'll get the bling in your box, okay? All right, until they're gone. So the people that are here, get them first. Okay, right, everybody. It's been my Thanks, time. Sue. Good, Good night, class. Sue. Good night.